burning of fossil fuels is embedded in almost everything we do in modern society. It's in the clothes that we wear, it's in the food that we eat, it's in how we get around uh, from one place to another. Everything that we do is permeated by the burning of these fossil fuels, which are then releasing uh, greenhouse gases, notably carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, and that is thereby warming up the planet. And our challenge as uh, researchers is to try to understand how do mass publics understand this threat? Do they understand the causes? Do they understand the impacts? And how willing are they to get engaged personally? Anthony Leiserwitz is director of the Yale Project on Climate Change. In a recent study, Global Warming's Six Americas, he found that the public's perception of climate change falls into six distinct categories. So our work lately has been really focusing on trying to understand who are the different publics within the American public. And what we found is that the American public does not speak with a single voice on this issue. There are in fact six very distinct Americas within America. Uh, and those groups each respond to this issue in very different ways for very different reasons. Our primary research thus far has been really to try to understand where the public is right now and who these different audiences are. And the first of those is what we call the alarmed. It's about 18% of the public. Uh, these are people who uh, are absolutely convinced climate change is happening, it's human caused, it's a very serious threat, it's happening now. They're already taking action in their own lives to try to reduce their own carbon footprint, and they're really hungry to know what's the next thing I can do. This has been called, in political science terms, an issue public. This is the part of the public that is the most mobilized and most engaged with this, with this issue. And that's actually a very large issue public compared to other issue publics, say on uh, gun rights or pro-choice or pro-life or anti-immigration or pro-immigration. I mean, those are all different kinds of issue publics out there that agitate and advocate for particular policies. Um, the climate change issue public is actually larger than most of those other ones. And that's a very surprising and unrecognized fact. The second group, however, is what we call the concerned. And that's a full third of the public, 33%. That group uh, believes climate change is happening, that it's human caused. Uh, they think it's a serious problem, but they still see it as a distant problem. And so they're there, they're concerned about it, but they haven't become personally involved with the issue. The third group is what we call the cautious, and that's about 19% of the American public. For this group, they're not really sure, is it happening, is it not, is it human caused, is it natural? So they're just they're not very focused on the issue yet. And then comes a very interesting group that we call the disengaged. This is a group that has heard of the issue. They are familiar with the term climate change or global warming, but they don't know anything about it. They don't know anything about the causes. They don't know anything about the impacts. They certainly don't know anything about the potential solutions. So the fifth group that we found is what we call the doubtful, and it's about 11% of the public. For this group, they're not really sure that climate change is happening or not. But they say if it is happening, it's naturally caused. It's not a problem. It's not going to impact people ever. Uh, and thus, they just don't see it as much of a risk at all. And then last comes the group that we call the dismissive. And this is about 7% of the public. And for them, not only is it that they believe climate change isn't happening, but they think it's a hoax uh, or that it's a conspiracy. Uh, it's a very small group of the public. Uh, on the other hand, it's a very uh, motivated group part of the public. Despite these fundamental differences, Americans say they support investments in alternative energy. We also find other policies, uh, in particular energy-related policies, that everybody agrees with. Alarmed and the dismissive, they all like the idea of investing more resources into the research for renewable energy. They all support a government subsidy uh, for those people who go out and buy more fuel-efficient cars or install solar panels on their roofs. It doesn't matter whether you're an alarmed or a dismissive on climate change, everybody supports that policy. And what that suggests is that there are ways to talk about this issue in particular, because it is ultimately an energy issue. There are ways to talk about it in, in, uh, in which everybody can see that there's real value. The point is, is that, and this is what politics is all about, it's about finding policies that people can come to agreement about, even though they may agree to it for very different reasons. In the end, we have to remember that the climate system doesn't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or a liberal or a conservative. Droughts don't di differentiate by your political party. 
A sea, sea level rise doesn't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. Uh, a hurricane won't make any distinctions based on your conservative or liberal ideology. But in the end, we have to care. We have to start acting now to resolve this issue because otherwise the impacts will affect all of us. The Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies is without a question one of the most exciting places to be in this field right now. Um, it's very rare to find a school or even a department at another university where you see such a diversity of perspectives all brought together under one roof. Ultimately, environmental problems require an interdisciplinary approach. No single discipline can solve climate change. No single discipline can solve biodiversity extinctions. No single discipline can create the sustainable city. And yet, only in places like here do all of those different perspectives come together in an integrated and interdisciplinary way to be able to solve the real world problems that uh, we face in the 21st century. For more information about the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.